down here too, so. Hello everyone. Hello again. This is Cindy Harrison and welcome to another evening of Meet the Artists and tonight's guest star guest is Barbara Bunsey. <laughs> I like guest star. That's pretty good. There you go. You are. And so um, we want to wait a little bit till some people join us and it's always fun for me to try and find ways of getting them to find us. Um, well, I think I told you I had a real issue Friday night with Amy. It usually a little block comes up that says live. It did not. And it would, I found the post, but it wasn't like the full post. It wasn't like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but anyway, there were comments. So I assumed people were there. And then you made a comment and it said thread under your name. And so I clicked on that and boom, it all showed up. So I have no idea. Yeah, again, I am not a techie person, so I, I don't know. I don't either. It's been doing a lot of weird things, I know. So um, <laughs> how's... So you said you had some uh, stormy weather. Has it passed? As of right now, yes. Yes. Good. We, we need the rain, but it's just been so, so hot and humid. And I think that's why the storms are happening. You know, these flash storms and then they go. <clears throat> yeah, I had, uh, we had some of that. We're um, in, a, in a deficit for rain right now. You, you used last couple springs. We've gotten a lot, a lot of rain, and this year, not so much. It's kind of scary. Yeah, because we don't want to go into a drought, and that will open up a whole nother can of worms, exactly. won't it? Exactly, especially this early in the season. So the um, thank you, everyone, who is joining us tonight. Thank you for being here, and also, too, if you're watching on the replay, Thank you for uh, taking time out of your day to watch us. And please, if you have any questions for Barbara, we welcome them, put them in the comments. I will ask for you and get some answers. If you're watching the replay and you have questions for Barbara, please tag her by putting the at sign in front of her name and she'll pop up and hopefully she'll be highlighted in blue so that she will then get notification that you asked her a question. Um, so I hope everyone is doing well. Let's get going. Uh, here is the first very difficult question of all. Uh, where are you from, Barbara? I live in Northeast Ohio in a community called Macedonia. We are in Northern Summit County. It's about halfway between Cleveland and Akron. Cool, okay. So, I mean, that's, have you always been there or did you? I, well, in Ohio? I, was, I was born and raised in Northeast Ohio. I now live maybe 15 miles, 10 to 15 miles from where I lived before we moved here. So yeah, this wow, has so been home all my life. So you always stay there. Did you yeah. have children? I yeah. do. I have two sons. Um, Jeff lives in Denver and Steve is in North Royalton, Ohio. And I have three stepchildren and six step grandchildren so, so um most of them moved away <laughs> uh, no we have the let's see um my stepdaughter and her husband and their daughter are still in the area okay uh, i have another uh, granddaughter in the area my stepson and his wife live in the area oh so i misunderstood it was the other way around the one son moved to denver and the other stayed close right by. right cool. and then my one stepdaughter and her family are in michigan Oh, oh, well, yeah. Well, that's closer than Denver, close. right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. That gets hard when they move too far away, huh? Right, right. Um, do you come from an artistic family? Um, yes and no. My dad was a woodworker. He made 
Um, he actually made a high chair for my dolls when I was a kid. Um, he built a wardrobe and he, he made all kinds of things for my mom too. Um, my mom was a seamstress. She, um, I guess you could say majored in that when she was in high school. Um, so she sewed a lot of my clothes and hers when I was a kid. She made me winter coats and things. Um, she did embroidery, she crocheted. So I, I guess, yeah, in a way, nobody painted, but they're still creative. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because my mom did all that sewing and embroidering and crocheting right. and knitting and, you know, all of that stuff. So sure. I, I count that as very being creative. Most definitely. <laughs> so when so when did you when did you learn that you could paint and you had, you know, when did you get that painting bug, if you will? Um, it was in the 80s, 1980s. I, I had done things all my life. I mean, I did embroidery and cross-stitch and sewing and knitting and all, all those kinds of creative things. And then I was at a friend's house and she said, oh, look, I'm taking these painting classes. Look what I did. And I thought, well, shoot, if she can do that, I can do that. So I signed up for the same classes and uh, they, those were in oils. And I don't want to speak ill of the teacher, but she, she was Priscilla Hauser, accredited, I guess that's the right word, um, which was a great thing. And she knew her stuff, but she was kind of limited, I hate to say. And once our group just wanted to paint everything in sight and we got to a point where like she, she just couldn't seem to take us any, anywhere. And then I went to a, um, I don't know if you remember, they used to have craft shows in all the shopping malls back in the 80s and I saw a display of someone who I thought just had the most gorgeous painting I had ever seen and that was Phyllis Tilford um if you remember Phyllis yeah I took I took classes from her okay too. okay she lived in Akron which is not too far from us and picked I picked up her card and she gave classes so I started painting with her in acrylics I never went back to oils. I've done a little bit of oil painting in classes, but not not anything really on my own. And uh, so I, again, I started with Phyllis and um, I just got to love painting. It was just so, so satisfying. So did, did Phyllis turn, was Phyllis into painting oils then or did she introduce you no. to acrylics and acrylics. you started, you, you converted? <laughs> Correct. Correct. Say so to buy all those other paints, but that's right. okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I did some Phyllis Tilford designs. They're just gorgeous, and I got the honor to be able to definitely take definitely. a class with her. So, um, was that before you got married? After you got married and had kids? Um, no, I was married and I had my two children. Um, I, well, let's just say I ended up in a divorce situation and um, my painting was my therapy through all of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, it does help. It does Definitely. help. Yeah. Like it's helping us get through pan the pandemic, right? For sure. For <laughs> sure. And a lot of other things in our lives. I do find I'm very productive when I'm angry. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there was that period where... I got a lot of painting done. So we need to be angry more often. <laughs> I do housework. I do housework when I get angry and I haven't gotten angry in many, many decades. Uh -oh. So, uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> um, so what other than Phyllis Tilford, what other artists has have influenced you? Uh, Helen Jeglick with mainly with the stroke work, the, the tin painting, painting on tin. Um, I've always loved Helen's designs and all and I'm, I'm proud to call her my friend um, she actually lives right up the road from us right now and um, was also influenced by Betty Caithness I loved her style her detail and all I took several classes with her um, and uh, yeah and isn't I, she from Virginia yes yeah. yes she's passed away now right. I know, a couple um, years ago. but I I 
Phyllis encouraged us, those of us in her classes, to um, do craft shows. I don't know if anyone else did, but I did, because uh, there came a, a time, we used to have a lot of little shops in the area, and I knew where they all were, and I would frequent them uh, looking for new books, new patterns and all, and I, I wanted to paint everything that was out there, but I, I couldn't keep it for myself, so I decided I needed to start doing craft shows to support my habit. And it, it did, it helped pay for all of that and then some. Um, so yeah, Phyllis was very, very encouraging with that. And I remember one time walking into her studio and she was so excited that she had designed something for the first time, it was her own design because she used to paint other people's things. And oh, okay. I remember saying, oh, I could never do that. And she goes, one day it'll come to you. And I guess one day it did, but, but to answer your, your question, so painting for craft shows, I bought every book and pattern I could find and all. And, and just by painting all of those, I think I learned a lot. Um, I did take a lot of classes. I were two hours north of, of Columbus, Ohio, which is where Hoot was. So went down there a number of times, took a lot of classes there. I uh, joined my painting chapter. We had a lot of artists teaching. I mean, local artists, but we also brought people in too to, to teach classes. So, um, but I think those three, Phyllis and Helen and Betty were my main, main influences. Yeah. Yeah. I, I painted a lot of their designs. Mm -hmm. um, and the, and and the, the painted tinware. Yeah. yeah. That's my first love actually for me it was like in the 90s I didn't get into it until the early 90s so mm -hmm. um that was that's when I found all these people um so when like when did you start teaching when did you know when did that come about and were you teaching other people's designs at the beginning yes I was teaching other people's designs honestly I was so excited about painting I just wanted to share it with everybody. Um, and there was a, a, one of the local high schools had adult education classes. And so I submitted that I, I would teach a class. There were 14 people in the first class I ever taught. Talk about panic. <laughs> I, I, the one lady after a while, she said, is this the first class you ever taught? I said, yeah. And she said, well, could see your hand shaking as you were demonstrating so yeah. but I had 14 people in that class and that was in the winter um, session and then when spring rolled around they wanted to continue going so we did an intermediate class for them and then the, somebody at the school called me and said hey we've got more people who want to learn this art form so I was teaching an intermediate and another beginner class then in the spring and when school was over for the summer and it was closed, so there was no adult education even, I just figured we would take the summer off and come back in the fall. And everybody wanted to keep painting. They wouldn't let you. They Really? So I said, well, if you don't mind coming to my home. So we redid the basement as best we could. And we just threw tables up all over the place. And I was teaching three classes a week at that point. Um, yeah, I had a, a Tuesday morning, a Tuesday evening, and a Thursday evening class. So, and I, I had like eight to 14 people in each class. So it, it was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun too. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, you know, people move on, their interests change, they're not, you know, get older, whatever. Um, sad to say the last two people there, I had um, probably four or five people who stuck with me from that original class who painted with me for years. And the last two of them passed away maybe two years ago. They were both in their 90s. Um, I feel like a part of me is gone too because yeah. of that. But it yeah. was, we, I, we had some beautiful friendships and, and some really fun times. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So when did you start designing? When did you become a designer? I think 
I don't remember. I think maybe in the 90s. Um, again, uh, I think this was the first time the National Convention was in Nashville. And I had been talking with Phyllis Telford and told her that I had been doing some designing on my own. And when I look at some of those things now, I just kind of roll my eyes. But she, again, encouraged me. And she had a booth in Nashville and told me that she would be happy to display my patterns in her booth. And so I helped her out in the booth and she had my patterns there and people actually bought them. So I thought they must really, really like my, my designs. And then that was my first experience. And back then it was impossible to get into these conventions because everybody wanted to be there. And I tried for several years to get into Hoot. And um, one year they opened it up. I don't know if you've been to Hoot or anybody else has been to Hoot, yeah. but it was a huge, huge auditorium but it had a mezzanine above because it was I remember like a, that yeah remember. A basketball court or something or another it was so they had opened up the mezzanine to 20 booths and I so I applied for that and I was number 18 I got the 18th spot and I was just so blown away and my goal was to sell enough patterns to pay for my room and food and gas and so on. And I did that and then some. So Excellent. I was flying high and on my way. That was, yeah, I went there in 98, I think it was. And it had the mezzanine. Mm -hmm. And I was like sick to my stomach because I thought, oh my God, like a child in a candy store. I just, it's like, how do you take all this in? There's no way you can take all of this in. It was. No, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the first time I went to who, I went with a friend and that was the way it was. We felt like we were at Christmas and you could hardly move. There were so many people there. It was just such a great experience it was to, wonderful to be surrounded by all that art and talent and wonderful, and wonderful just design. all the like-minded people and everyone everyone in every convention obviously everyone is so nice oh they're sure. so welcoming they're so helpful they're Definitely. i mean just everyone's having a great time it's like mm -hmm. christmas <laughs> it's sure. like christmas every day yes, it is yes at it convention is. made um, some wonderful friends doing those conventions oh definitely definitely you kind of miss those days, you know, I get it. And yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I don't miss the work of setting up a booth and things like that. But I, I miss seeing the people. Yeah. And, and it is funny because when you if a year goes by, you go back a year later and you see him again. It's like no time has passed at all. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. wonderful. Yep. It is so wonderful. Yep. Hey, um, thank you all for joining us. I'm interviewing. I'm here with Barbara Bunsey and finding out about her artful journey. If you have any questions for her, please post them in the comments and I'll ask for you. Um, but again, thank you, Barbara, for being here. Let's thank see. You. We have the next question. So you started designing, it didn't take you too long from the time you started painting till the time you became a teacher till the time you started designing, right? Yeah, not, not a whole long, I, I, I really don't know when I published my first pattern, but I'm going to say I probably started painting in, in uh, the mid 80s and probably my first pattern was maybe early 90s to mid 90s. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So what, what was your favorite subject matter? What was, you know, what did you, what were you attracted to? When I started painting? When you started designing. D designing? Yeah. Mm. A little bit of everything. I did try doing some stroke work designs. Um, didn't know enough about them at the time to, to do them justice. Uh, but I did, I think I started there. Um, I know I did. I, I love to, to go to flea markets and, and places like that too. And I had, um, I wish I still had them, 
but I actually sold them at a craft show. So somebody else liked them too. I, I did muffin tins. I spray painted them and painted, you know, turned them upside down and painted the bottoms of it. And I had a, a set with herbs and a set with different flowers. And those patterns sold really, really well. I've always, I guess I've always liked nature, flowers, fruits, things like that. Um, I'm drawn to still life. That, it took a while for me to design that way but i i've always been drawn to still lives and and again a lot of nature things things that have to do with creation maybe again flowers fruits vegetables even um butterflies i'm not great at birds although i have painted a few birds but if the if if an idea speaks to me i do my best to to paint them as best as i can I'm not Lydia Steves, though. <laughs> <laughs> no kittens in your in your future, right? <laughs> um, what? Let's see. How do you? So, how do you come up with your designs? Is it? Do you do like a vineyard? Do you set up the fruits or the vegetables or, you know, the flowers? Do you set and take pictures of them? Sometimes, sometimes I do. Um, I do have a, a yeah photo cube that I, I set things up in. Um, if you remember, I, I just had a design come out and pixelated palette, the military hats. Uh, I, I set those up in the photo cube and I, I moved them around, placed things different places just to see what, and took a bunch of pictures. And then I just laid them out and decided which I thought looked the best. And that's, that's what I used to paint from. Um, fruit. I, I always say I, I never took art in school because I can't draw and I still can't draw, but I'm getting better. Um, I'm, I'm fairly good at fruit. So when it comes to a fruit design, I can pretty much lay that out just by sketching it rather than taking photographs of it. Um, I did last year, right before the pandemic hit, I Sort of my arm sort of got twisted into taking a class of drawing from life. It's an our Akron artist who I don't know well, but I, I'd met him previously and I knew actually I was looking for someone to teach me to to work with pastels and he said, hey, I'm doing this class. Why don't you join us? And he would set up little vignettes and we just had to draw them and that scared the bejeebers out of me, but I actually did better than I thought I would. Um, and he was very helpful with um, ideas and, and input and everything. So um, I'm, I'm trying to practice a little bit more of that too. It's great. Amy's here tonight and she's asking, Hi. where does your love for Colonial Williamsburg come, in, come from? Come from? When I was in school, grade school, I hated history. And, you know, battles and generals and dates. And, and I, I remember thinking, I, I swear I was like nine years old. And I thought, you know, I, I don't care about these battles and wars and stuff. Why can't they just teach us how these people lived, what they did, and things like that? Fast forward to 1971 when I made my first trip to Colonia Williamsburg. And when you check in at the visitor center, you climb on a bus that takes you into the restored area. I walked off that bus and thought, this is my dream come true. This is what I have always wanted. And I, I just, it just filled me. Um, I've been there. I've last lost track how many. I've been there hundreds of times. We usually would go in this once in the spring and once in December uh, around Christmas time. Um, of course, haven't been there since December of 2019. So I'm getting a little bit panicky right, right now, but um, I'm hoping to get back at some point this year. Um, it just, it, it, it was an artful time. So maybe that it has something to do with it too, the, the decorative um, 
parts of it, the architecture, the, the decor of the homes. Now, granted, Williamsburg just represents the top 2% of people living back then, right, right. but it still just always spoke to me. We learned something new, at least one, one thing new every time we go. What did you um, think of the, the colors on the walls of the governor's house? Oh, my, well... <laughs> They've changed. I don't know when you were there. Oh, last. I was there uh, two years ago. Okay. Okay. Uh, two years ago. All yeah, right. Um, so chrome green. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, chrome green was um, very popular back then because it reflected the light. The wealth. And also, and it was very hard to get that color. Right. Yeah. Right. Very but bright. If Very you bright. think, you know, once the sun went down or on a gloomy day, you had candles, maybe, and candles were very expensive. So they really, when the sun went down, they pretty much went to bed. But yeah. the greens, that, that chrome green would reflect the light. And it was, um, they would put really high gloss varnishes and things on them too, to reflect the lights, even right. the candlelight. So mm -hmm. that was one reason why, why they mm -hmm. used those. Yeah, it's a little bright on our eyes today, <laughs> but back then it was quite fashionable. It, it was very, yeah, I know. We, and I had to go back, I, you know, cause I had those questions going in, like you said, the, the architecture, the artistry, the whole we even did one of the night tours and everything mm -hmm. and um and i i said to my husband before we leave here i have to go back to the governor's house because i have to talk to them about the decor and, and the color yeah. schemes and stuff yeah. like that yeah because that just is like i can't i would never have imagined that they would have those bright colors on their walls i it just wouldn't be something i would you know, right. automatically say, oh, yeah, well, mm -mm. <laughs> it was it was eye opening, let me tell you, yes. in more than one way. <laughs> I, I've learned a lot by traveling down there. Yeah. Yeah. But it is a beautiful place. And it I is. And it's, it's where I go when I de-stress there. I always say it's my breath of fresh air. Once once we get there and start walking the streets, same thing like with picking up my paintbrush. I just feel the stress going out of my body. Yeah, some people go to an ocean, you go to Williamsburg. I, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So you painted in oils and you've painted in acrylics. Do, you know, which one is it that you favor or do you have a different medium that's your favorite? No, acrylics because I'm an impatient person and I couldn't deal with waiting for the oils to dry and all that kind of stuff. And I, I, I'm thinking when I started back in the 80s, if they did have any um, sprays or anything, fixatives that could set them up earlier, faster, I wasn't aware of them. Um, acrylics dry quickly. I mean, that that's a bad thing too, but um, you, you most times you can paint over them if you've made a mistake or sand it down and start all over again. Uh, again, being an impatient person, I, I want to get going on something. I don't want to sit there and wait for it to dry or, or anything else. So um, I've dabbled in watercolors. I When somebody's come to our painting chapter who's done watercolors, I've done that. But um, let's just say I'm not a watercolorist. Yeah. But, you know, watercolors, acrylic paints dry a little darker than they look when they're wet. And watercolors are just the opposite. So it's, for me, it's difficult to um, figure out what it's going to end up looking like at the end. And I'm always making things darker and darker, it seems, when I'm playing with watercolors. <laughs> it is a different medium for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have a favorite technique? Favorite technique? Well, I guess maybe dry brushing. Um, I, I used to always just float my highlights. And uh, like if you wanted that bright dot of a highlight, you know, we used to do those bullseyes floating the color all the way around. I was just never happy with the way that looked. And then I started dry brushing. Um, now, 
Uh, well, I do dry brush even along the edges of some things, but especially if I want to highlight in the center of something and that little highlight dot sheen, I find for my, me anyway, dry brushing that on gives me a much softer appearance. I do still float the colors on if, if necessary, and I'll clean up edges with floated color, but um, I really do enjoy dry brushing. I, I, I like the, uh, the look I get by doing it. So what is your favorite brush? My favorite brush for dry brushing right now, I like the uh, Dynasty Mezzaluna brushes because they, the bristles are stiff and they, they don't come to a perfect chisel edge, but they have somewhat of a chisel edge so I can get in there into tight areas and use that for my dry brushing too. Um, if you're talking about stroke work, it used to be the low Cornell number six liner, but I hate to say I'm not sure if low Cor Cornell is producing anymore, but for King, doing King art, King art has taken over. Their, okay. Their All right. but for, so for, doing, for doing strokes right now, my favorite is the Joe Sonia sure touch number six brush. It's Perfect. Perfect. So we'll, have to, we'll have to buy one of those. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do like some of her other brushes, the the stripers and um, some of her other brushes. I, I like real well, too. So cool. So anyone who's joining us um, coming in now, you're free to ask questions, put them in the comments and I will ask them for you. And thank you for being here. Um, what is what is a the best tip you can give a, a student? Don't stress about it. Um, it. It's pretty much, especially with it, well, any kind of painting, I guess, but it's pretty much always fixable. Um, remember, if you're painting with acrylics, as long as it's wet, you can take it right off. So if you don't like it, get that damp paper towel and wipe it off. It's not, not that important. It's not a matter of life and death and practice, practice, practice. That's, that's the name of the game. I know people don't like to hear that, just like playing the piano, but you know, you can't go from playing chopsticks to playing with a great orchestra in two days. And it's the same thing with painting. Practice, practice, practice. And, and I, I, I encourage people to also to take classes from a variety of teachers, which I think with Zoom is making that even more possible for people, because I found and still find if I am taking a class from someone else, and even if I'm just listening to a class, I always pick up something, some little tidbit little trick that they do that I never thought about doing and when I do it's like wow why didn't I think of that before this makes my painting world so much better and easier that is very very true very true so um and also too because I feel very strongly about tips like that um I put together every Thursday, I have tips from the table where right. I encourage all the members to put whatever tip they have. I used to think I was like the last one to know something. And I'd say, you know, well, you know, you could do this. And they're like, really? We didn't know that. I said, I thought I was the last one to know, but here. So even if you think it's the minutest tip that, you know, right. someone must have already told everybody this, put it in there anyways, you'll be surprised. Absolutely. So, well, I posted a while back about taking little, little pieces that you're painting and putting them on a strip of masking tape. And same thing, I thought, well, probably everybody knows this, but oh, I'll put it up. Oh, my goodness, all these people were thanking me for doing it. So absolutely, every yeah. little, every little thing, little bit of knowledge we can get, we, we should pass it on to each other. Yeah, it, it'll make us all a better painter mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, is there a medium or a subject or a technique that you haven't done yet that you would like to try? Mm. 
Well, I, a friend of mine who lives in Williamsburg um, is a great pastel artist. And a couple of times when we were visiting, I did a couple classes with her. Um, but I would like to learn more about pastels. I'd like to play with that a little bit more. Mm. That's a whole nother medium. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I don't that I all I would just get all dirty and I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, it, she's a very good teacher and we don't get all dirty. So oh, that's good. that's a good thing. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, so what uh, let's see, Bonnie wrote conventions. Oh, this was about when we we're talking about who conventions used to be like that. So much fun and so much of everything. The painting industry has was flourishing. Yes, it was. I miss that too. It was great. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was. It was. But Zoom is great now. <laughs> yes, it is because we can go. We can take a class and we can go to the conventions in our pajamas. <laughs> yes. You know, we don't have to lug paints and surfaces and brushes all over the place and on a plane and all that. We can go to our quiet little painting room and it's right there for us all we have to do is turn our computer on that is true that mm -hmm. is true mm -hmm. so let's see what else i have here <clears throat> what type of brush is the joe sonia uh, shore touch brush it's a round brush it's what i use um, mostly for doing strokes um I may have one here. I can show you what it looks like. That'd be great. I know I had one, but I, you know, I clean up and I must have cleaned up and put it away because I'm not finding it right now. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't have it. It has a blue handle on it. Um, the bristles are probably at least an inch long. It's a round brush. Um, the thing I like about when I'm doing strokes, I've done them with um, round brushes. For me, I find that if I push, press, here's, well, that's not even a round brush. My goodness, I'm not prepared at all. So here's here's a round brush. Can we? Up oh, in front of your face, yeah. Yeah, okay. So if I push the bristles, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Here we go. You so can if you see put your, how, put your how hand, kind put, of... yeah, put your other hand in front of it like that. There you go. Yeah, see? Yeah, when you do that, it, it focuses in on the brush. Okay. So it kind of, the, br the bristles kind of arc mm -hmm. or curve. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like that when I'm pulling a stroke because those always feather out. The, the sure touch, the bristles go straight across. So I don't have any feathering out. They just pull along really nicely. So cool. that's hey, maybe I'm, we'll have you give yeah. us a demo on that on in the in the group one oh, day. Okay. You can do a little demo on that brush. That would be cool. Oh sure, absolutely. I'd be happy yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Nancy wrote, "What do you enjoy designing the most?" Hmm. Probably still life. I, I don't know what it is about still life. I'm always drawn to that. Even when we go to the art museums and all, I'm always drawn to still lifes. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why. I, I've actually asked myself that question several times. What is it about that that, that you like so much? And I, I don't know, but I do. Maybe the, the, the placement of the different surfaces, the, the different textures, um, you know, a, a, a round surface and then a square surface and, and putting them together somehow to tell a story. Um, again, I go back to the military hats. Um, I use my dad's army hat my uh, from World War II, my uncle's army cap from the Korean War. And I, I did, I couldn't find anybody I knew who had been in the, the Navy. So I borrowed a Navy hat from um, 
someone at our local VFW who was in the Vietnam War. So those three wars were represented. And, and I just, I wanted to do that. We took a trip to uh, Normandy back in 2017. And uh, uh, the main reason we took that cruise is because it started and ended in Paris and happened to go to Normandy, which, okay, I had no idea how much it was going to affect me. Um, it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And, and, and I, I just, you know, I, I thank the service people for doing what they do through all the years, through all the wars and everything. And um, the people there in France were so gracious and so still thankful to the Americans for what happened. And I, I just, I wanted to do something to honor them. And that's what a, a lot of my things are just honoring people or again, I like to do creation. I like to honor creation with with florals and, and fruits and things like that. Um, you asked me before what I'm inspired by. It's It could be a, a, a line from a song or a poem. And sometimes there have been a number of times where I've been at different places and I, I look at something and glance away and think, oh, that was good. I should paint that. And I look again, but it wasn't what I really thought it was. But I keep that image that I thought I saw in my head. And that's what I use as my inspiration. Cool. Uh, let's see. Donna wrote... Can you go to Williamsburg when you are in Newport News in March? Is that the painting chapter? Maybe. If so, I, yeah. If you're that close, you might I'm be planning able to, to be there. <laughs> go check out the map, right? I'm planning um, to be there. Amy is asking, see, tell us about painting for the president. How did that come oh, about? Oh, gosh. Well, there, there are two, two sort of stories. Back in 2004, um, in the Decorative Painter, the magazine for the National Society, they put a call out to artists. Mrs. Bush um, apparently loves folk art. And so she asked the members of the society to paint ornaments for the um, official White House Christmas tree in the Blue Room. And so we had to submit for it and they were all musical instrument ornaments and they had to be painted with stroke work. I ended up getting a jingle bell about mm, at least that big. And uh, we painted them and had to send them back to the society and then the best 300 or 350, I forget what it was, would be chosen to, to be put on the White House tree. And uh, of course, you, you know, you paint it, you send it off and you hold your breath. I'm, was mine good enough? Thankfully, it was. And then we were invited to a, a reception at the White House hosted by Mrs. Bush. So that, that was the first time. Then back in 20, 2008, that um, was the last year of the Bush presidency. And again, Mrs. Bush reached out to the society and they needed people for several different things. One was to paint these big drums that were on the center of the tables, um, the buffet tables. Um, so there were several um, SDP members who painted those. And then I got a phone call from uh, someone at the society who was reaching out to four members because Mrs. Bush needed someone to paint ornaments that they were going to give as gifts to family, friends, and White House staff. And would I be interested in submitting a design? Well, of course I said yes. Um, we knew it had to be the White House on, on the front and then a bunting at the top and the bottom. Um, mm -hmm. But she said to me, I know you like detail. Just remember, if you get this commission, you have to paint 1,010 ornaments. Oh my God. I got this phone call in June. Uh, so, okay, fine. So the ornament came and I kind of agonized over the design and all, but I finally, I did it. I got it done, mailed it off. And then it was probably the beginning of July that I got the phone call that Mrs. Bush liked my design. And I was to paint 1,010 ornaments. 
which is a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to tell anybody about this um, for security reasons, but I knew I couldn't do it on my own. So I did ask four of my very, very trusted students to help me. I had to do all the painting, but they um, traced the outline of the White House on for me. And they did a couple of they put berries on bushes and just a couple other things, um, did some varnishing for me and that, um, but I had to do all the painting. I started my first, the first ornament I painted was on August 10th and the last box was shipped uh, the week before Thanksgiving. Oh my goodness. Grace. So that was pretty much my life, seriously. And I was working part-time at the time, but my, when I wasn't working at the bank, I was in the studio and I worked on kind of pretty much assembly line. I would do a dozen at a time at about 500, I have to say, I did go through a bit of a depression and I thought, what in the hell were you thinking that you could actually do this? And then the, as, as my, my helpers were, were, um, we, we were using, um, final touch varnish because I figured that was the, the best way to do it. Something apparently in the varnish reacted with something in the ornament and turned the White House pink. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I think 120 or 150 that I had to repaint. Um, that was not fun. Uh, although I thought that that was happening in October when Mrs. Bush had turned pink lights onto the <laughs> White House for breast cancer awareness. And I thought, okay, well, we're right there along with that. But um, but other than those few mishaps, yeah, it was um, it was a very meditative experience. Um, yeah, it was it was a real blessing in my life. And again, um, we got invited to to a reception. And uh, long story, but two of the people who helped me um, were able to join me at the White House. And it is something we still talk about. And I don't think any of us will ever forget it. it That's was wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, assuming you got you got, re, you know, you got paid for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But boy, that's a lot. That's a lot of time out of your life. And, yes, uh, yes. But it's a time that you'll never, never forget. Absolutely. Definitely. And um, it, it was, yeah, it was a great experience. I, I wouldn't give it up for anything in the world. Did you, did you save one for yourself? Or I did. All, yes. You did good. <laughs> I, I, I think I have the first one. I, I kept that one for myself and then uh, sent the rest. So I had a number of them all, you know, one of a thousand, two of a thousand and all. And supposedly the president got number one and then his daughters got two and three and so on down, down the line. But Little do they know. <laughs> well, I hope everyone who received it appreciated it and, and knew that a little bit of all of us who worked on them went along with those ornaments. Oh, a little bit, bit of love. Definitely. That is that is just amazing. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank sure. you, Amy, for asking that question. Yes, thanks, Amy. Um, let's see. So Claire writes, please consider a retreat in Williamsburg. So a painting retreat. Okay. Sounds and, good to uh, me. Malia says, I love your working on a piece of wax paper as palette paper mm. that she learned from you. So that little bit of, you know, tips was I, I owe that to phyllis tilford that's what we used as a palette when when i started painting with phyllis and i've i've that's all i ever use yeah that's amazing um let's see my family was navy julie says i love still lifes and and Melina's drawn to those as well. What is your favorite painting you've ever done? Do you have a favorite? Because they're like your babies, right? I oh, mean, yeah. so do you have a favorite painting? I think right now it's the Magnolia that I'm going to be teaching in August, and and the military hats. That that's that's very special to me. Yeah, mm. but the the Magnolia I think is. Um, 
is my favorite. And I, I think I shared this story before, but if you'll indulge me, um, when I, a friend, a Facebook friend posted a picture of a magnolia. Oops, I always go the wrong there way. There you go. That she took in Colonia Williamsburg. And it just spoke to me. I just, I love magnolias. Of course, I love Williamsburg and all. And I asked her if um, it would be okay with her if I painted it. And she said, yes. So I did it on a 12, um, 12 by 12 canvas. And um, as I was working on it, it, it kind of reminds, because it's just the big magnolia. Is it okay if I show it? Sure, yeah. Sure, okay. Definitely. So back up, back up. You want it further right. away from the computer. There you go, right there. Okay. So as I'm working on it, again, it's just the, the magnolia takes up most of the canvas. And I kept thinking, it, it reminded me of Georgia O'Keeffe's Morning Glory. And once I got it all finished, and if you remember in the photograph, there was a building back here. Sorry, I'm going the wrong way always. But I didn't want that to detract from the, um, uh, the, the magnolia. So that's why I just did some streaky gray paintings in here. Um, but as I kept looking at this, again, it reminded me of that, that um, morning glory. And then when I looked up some pictures online, she had a lot of grays up in the top of hers and she had a lot of dark colors at the bottom. And I just, and that's why I've named this Magnolia a la Georgia. Because <laughs> after the fact, I thought, you know, maybe she was standing over my shoulder and watching what I was doing and kind of helped to guide me with that painting. And it's, I think it's my favorite, yeah. It's, it is beautiful. Thank you. Donna is, said, yes, um, it is the Tidewater Decorative Painters in Newport News. And we are about 20 miles away from Williamsburg. So you know where you're going to be. <laughs> I, I do. I need to answer an email later or today. Yeah. Um, see, Darlene said, wonderful story. Billy says, how many did you have to paint? Was a thousand and ten? The ornaments, a thousand ten. Wow. Um, I had to do those extra ones just in case there was breakage, which there was. Oh, there was. Um, so there, if yeah, if there was breakage in the shipping and all. I, I worked with a, um, that's a feather in his cap too, with a, a guy who owns the UPS store in our area, um, figuring out how, how to pack them so they wouldn't break or not too much breakage anyway. And um that's 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 the story he tells everybody too that he shipped all these ornaments to the White House. So what were the ornaments made out of? Just blue glass. It was they glass, were, okay. And, yeah. Yeah. So they were balls? They were yes. spheres? Yes. Oh wow. I thought maybe it was wood and flat, but no, 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 no. It was it was a round, round ball ornament. Yeah. Oh wow. That makes sense. And, and one worse. of the things my helpers did was just take the tops, you know, where the hangers are. Yeah. Off because you know, you think, oh, what's that? Well, you do that times a thousand. It takes a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. so and then putting them all the, back in <laughs> right those are all the little things that they did to help me I probably wouldn't have shipped them out before Thanksgiving had it not been for them that, that's incredible so thank you thank you to the friends <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and thank you to the bushes for allowing me to to do that it was a great to have honor. that opportunity yeah mm -hmm. that's wonderful mm -hmm. so what are other than the magnolia what are what are the other projects that you have? Um, I know you're doing in a couple nights, you're going to be doing uh, a smaller section of oh, one of your larger right. projects for the demo. Right. I'm going to be doing just a portion. So I, I painted it, this dogwood. Can you see it well enough? Yeah. Uh, yep. Just on this tag. It is just a portion of um, my garden party design which is the, the can, it's on the candle. And, on the plate. and then I've got the design still. Oh, 
on the plate. You can see it. Beautiful, yeah. Right there, yeah. So I just took a portion of the part that I have on the candle. And we're just going to do a quick paint on that. If anybody wants to paint along, that's great. You can paint it on any surface. Um, you can either email me. I can send you an e-packet or you can buy, buy it at my um in our Etsy store, you can just, I think it's etsy.com slash shop slash calico goose patterns. <laughs> and you should be able to find it there if you'd like to paint along with us. And then in July, we're doing the um, Gifts of Spring basket. Which is way bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a bit, it's a big piece. So there are seven spring flowers on here thanks to um, Andy and Jamie De Palma who are making the baskets because they were uh, I got my original one from Artist Club and of course they're not around anymore but De Palma's have um, taken on making this along with a lot of other I just got their um, uh, catalog and wow they have some wonderful wonderful wood surfaces there so um if anybody's looking for anything make sure you you check them out yep that's uh de palma's wood crafts right i think it's custom wood de palma custom, custom custom wood yeah wood custom crafts. wood right, right yeah so we can put the the uh, link in there after definitely sure, sure um so i'm looking forward um the, the, the Gifts of Spring basket, I think, only has maybe 10 or 11 more seats available. And the second one, the first uh, one sold out. Okay. And right. then the, the uh, Magnolia, I think we only have maybe 14 more seats available. So if you're interested in painting either of those, make sure you, you register now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is homework, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they each have a short prep video, maybe 20, 30 minute video I have there for you. Um, but it's easy enough to do. Yeah. So uh, do, are you teaching anywhere else? You're teaching for chapters or? Um, yeah, well, I, I'm going to Virginia in March. I said I do need to confirm that email. Um, that's, that's about it right now. I usually teach at my home chapter, but we haven't been meeting um, since COVID. I did, I did get my, I think mine was the last class that was taught last year before the shutdown. Um, and we're, we're looking right now for a place to meet. Um, are they starting back up or are things starting to open up in your area? Oh yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the, the mask mandate is gone. I'm not sure I'm happy about that. It's a little uh, soon. Yeah, exactly. Um, it feels real weird that, you know, one day we were required to wear masks and the ne next day nobody's wearing a mask. Well, you're supposed to wear a mask if you're not vaccinated, but I haven't seen very many people wearing a mask. So that, yeah. that makes me a little nervous, but how I are you going to know? How, how exactly. You gonna, you so know. I'm just holding my breath and, and hoping that, that, you know, well, the vaccine does what it's supposed to do and we'll, we'll all stay safe and, and finally get back on a path of normalcy here. So I, I am with you on that one. Okay. So uh, Dawn is asking, when is the Magnolia class again? I believe it's August 4th. August 4th. And I think we're doing that one from 6 to 10. Okay, because I, <laughs> bad me, don't have it in front of me. Uh, let's see, okay, time and date for small Magnolia video. It's not a video, it's going to be live, okay. Yeah, uh, that's the dogwood, and that's on Friday night at 7 o'clock. Oh, it's a this dogwood, one. not a not a magnolia. Okay, this one, this one is a dog. The dog. There you go. Okay. If this yeah. is what, what you're asking about, yeah, this is going to be Friday, this Friday night, two days from now, at seven at p.m. 7 mm -hmm. Eastern time, and um, it's free to watch. Right. And if you want to paint along with her, you can email her or go to her Etsy store at Calico Goose and find the pattern. Correct. So definitely. Definitely. So come back then. Um, let's see. So uh, how 
how can people find you other than uh, your email, your website, your Etsy store? Do you have any other social media that? Uh, now I'm, I'm fa Facebook was allowing posts to Instagram and all of a sudden that feature is gone. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of pictures on my phone to post to Instagram. Yeah, but I, I, I periodically I do put things up on Instagram. Um, basically, yes, yeah, just Facebook. Um, the website, which my son is updating, should be hopefully up and running very shortly. And the Etsy store, I don't have all my patterns in the Etsy store. Um, I try to keep those more seasonal and pretty much Christmas. I keep up all the time because, you know, it's Everybody the wrong Christmas. time of year to paint Christmas. That's right. Everybody loves Christmas. What's sure. your email? And I'll type it in the thing over here. B. Buncey, so B B U N S E Y at calico goose.com. There you go. There's her email if you want to give her a buzz. Um, and the, the I put the website up in the description so that you can go there and find more of her pattern packets. And on Facebook, right? You probably have some pictures on Facebook. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, you can look up uh, my Calico Goose page. That's where I post most there of you those. Go. So thank you. Thank you all for um, joining myself and Barbara tonight. And I hope you enjoyed uh, listening about her Afro journey. I know I have. And thank you, Barbara, for sharing that with us tonight. And uh, we will see you. Friday night and okay, sounds good. Hopefully we'll we'll be painting with you. Okay. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you to everybody who showed up tonight. So remember everyone, paint with heart. So good night. Good night. <laughs>